say, if you're in college right now, before we take an offering, I want you to stand up. And I just want to encourage you guys. As I said to Lisa this morning, getting your degree is kind of like eating an elephant, one bite at a time. And some days you just are like, I'm not going to get there. But I just want to pray for all of you on this journey, and we're all on different journeys, right? Some of us go faster than others. But I just want to pray for grace for each one of you just to finish this journey because it's so worth it. And, and you know, if you're called to do it, and this is not for those who aren't doing it, it's, it's not a condemnation at all. But those that are doing this, grace, 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 grace. <laughs> To not only finish, but to finish well and to get everything that you're supposed to get on your journey. Amen. So I just bless all of you and just pray because there's an anointing to finish. So I just pray that you just receive that anointing. There's an anointing not to quit. Amen. And so it's uh, just grace to you. Amen. So bless you guys. And, you know. Uh, Larry Randolph, who we got to hear, and I love Larry Randolph. Yeah. And just one of the things that he said that I really loved, and he was talking about pastoring, uh, he pastors a Baptist church, and he just talked about the importance of faithfulness. Yeah. And that if you just stay faithful, faithfulness is so underrated in our culture. Yeah. And he basically said, if you just stay faithful, God will eventually, he said, I'm not quitting my church because those people need me to be faithful. And I will say, I'm also going to sidetrack, let me get back on track, but there are numerous very, very known prophets that are planning churches right now. Bob Hazlett is getting ready to plant a church in New England, right? Because they realize the value at this moment, and real prophets love the church, and they don't turn their back on the church, but... Larry was like, when you stay faithful, God just shows up and says, he's being so faithful, I'm going to show up and move. Right, right. Yeah, God's checking, that dude's being faithful. I got to move because he's being so faithful. Yeah. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, faithfulness, whether it's your journey in college or if it's just being present on a Sunday morning. Come on now. God shows up yeah. to meet his people. Because of grace, but also because of faithfulness. That's so good. Amen. So, this is a good moment to take an offering. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. So, let's stand together and let's let's take an offering. Amen. Let's make this declaration together. Amen. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits. Sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. You can bring those in worship cheerfully. Amen. Also, I know many of you give online at globalharvestchurch.co. Thank you for your great, great faithfulness in giving. It just helps us keep moving forward and doing everything God's called us to do. Amen. And Global Harvest Christian School could not exist without your faithfulness in giving. Because our tuition wouldn't keep us open. So thank you. Amen. Praise God. Bye-bye. <laughs> now at this time, let's dismiss the kids to go to their programs. Bye-bye. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. It was a great week. And um, it's always good, you know, to go to global conferences. And I do want to encourage you that Global Awakening will be doing a conference 
in Oklahoma City the first week in August. This is a big, big, big deal because I don't, to my knowledge, they've never done a conference in Oklahoma. And so it'll be in downtown Oklahoma City. In addition to, of course, Randy Clark, some of the speakers will be Will Hart, Michael Koulianis, um, Sean and Chris Smith, Robbie Dawkins. Uh, worship will be by Upper Room. And uh, Martin Smith, who was the, the lead singer for Delirious for many years. And so that, that conference is called Greater Things. And so I encourage you guys, if you can go to the whole thing, the impartation that you get in a Global yeah. Awakening Conference is life-changing. And uh, so I encourage you to go to that if possible. Um, and if you can only go for a, uh, the evening services, my understanding are open to the public. There is a registration fee and it does cost to go. Uh, but the benefit that you get from it will be life-changing. So I encourage you to check that out if you can. Okay? Amen. Praise God. I know Heidi Baker was supposed to be there, but I don't know if that's going to happen because of, uh, of everything. In the nations with COVID, many nations still are not open. Um, so but check all that out. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here. Right? So I want to continue this morning, and um, I'll be honest, a lot of the reasons that I'm, I'm kind of teaching, and this is part three of our series on Shut the Door. And uh, a lot of the reasons that I'm teaching on this is I am very deliberately getting us ready for when Joe Moody and her team will be here. And that Saturday, um, Joe is teaching not basics, but she's going a little deeper into inner healing and deliverance. And I've seen some of the topics that she's teaching on and her team, and it's going to be really, really powerful. I know they're going to do, go a little bit in, more in depth into things like generational curses and blessings. They're going to talk about the spiritual roots of diseases. Um, they're going to talk about penetrating culture. Um, there'll be lots of ministry. There'll be lots of training. There'll be lots of equipping and lots of impartation. And if there's any way that you can be there on Saturday, I encourage you to do that. I know we're all busy and you know we all have stuff going on and I totally get that. But if you can get there encourage you to get there. And she's bringing a team. There's like eight of them coming. Wow. So, um, including a couple of young single guys. So, um, if you're <laughs> just saying, Excellent. you know, if, if uh, you're, you're single and you're looking, or the mamas are looking for them, or the mamas are looking for them be present. All right? So, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let's continue this morning as we talk about shutting the door. Amen. And, and we've been talking about the process of sanctification. When, when we were saved, when we were born again, we became new creations. Old things become new. Everything becomes new. It's a supernatural thing that happens when you get born again. However, there's this journey of sanctification that we're all on, yeah, where everything that's inside of us, the Lord wants to let out, and he wants to get out, amen, and so we, we're instructed that even though we're holy, the word tells us to pursue holiness, yeah. the word tells us to pursue these things that we've already been given, amen, <coughs> you understand that's not automatic, right, you have to learn to walk in what the Lord's given you, and so uh, Ephesians talks about, you know, we do things like put off the old, okay? That's not automatic, right? Generally, when somebody gets saved, they still have to be renewed and sanctified, right? A lot of unsaved people are pretty raw. I heard some of them in the hotel where we were staying. Yeah, I was like, did he just say that, Right? And, uh, and, I, and also, I'm just going to say that Mark Sharona used some words that I'm going to use in my sermon soon, right? So, so just look out. I looked at Jamie, and I was kind of like, Dusty Hux, we can say that now? <laughs> right? <laughs> she said no. Um, so, but we, <laughs> we have to be intentional about putting off the old and putting on the new. And no matter how saved you are, 
Hallelujah. There is still a process where we have to say no to the enemy in certain areas of our lives and yes to the Lord. All right. Because there's this very intentional thing, and there's this picture even in the Old Testament where God gave them the land. And I've talked about this the last couple of weeks. He gave them the land. He said, it's yours. It belongs to you. You've got it. Now go possess it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of people in the church who are now saying, we've got everything that we need, and yet their lives are a wreck. Because they're not pursuing what God's already given Amen. So they gradually took the land. They There were a squatters and people in the land that had to be removed. And this is a spiritual principle, right? Uh, but there are th things that they had to drive out. And so in our lives, even though we have everything, there are certain doors that we have to be intentional about. First of all, not opening. But secondly, if we have open doors in our lives that we have to shut those doors, yes, amen, yes. and that we have to not only shut doors, but then we're like, okay, God, those areas where there have been strongholds, God, we want you to come yes. in, and we're cooperating with you to build godly strongholds, amen, to replace places where the enemy has gotten a foothold in our life. That's the process of sanctification, amen, and so... Um, one of the scriptures that we've also referred to the last couple of weeks, I'm just again uh, laying a foundation here and re reminding us, because sometimes we forget what was talked about, but um, uh, Ephesians 4, 26 through 27, amen? Because possessing our land means we usually have to shut open doors of access to the enemy in our life. I don't care how spiritual you are, how long you've been saved, what your gift is, you may be the most prophetic person on the planet, but you have to possess the land, yeah. right? And so that means giving, saying to the enemy, you can't have access here anymore. And so Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 says, be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. Come on. Okay. Now that verse is specifically talking about Anger, but we could apply this to many, many situations because that Greek word for opportunity is topos, and it means a place, a territory, an area, an opportunity, a pa power, a place of control, or an area of legal control. And some people are like, well, you know, the devil can't touch us, and he can't do anything, and you know, the old expression, and we've said it before, that um, a Christian can have anything they want, right? And if you give the enemy access to your life, he can, the enemy can influence you, yeah. okay? So we don't want to give him an opportunity, right? And some of the translate, some of the ways that that's translated is don't give the devil a foothold. Don't give the devil a place. Do not make room for the devil, and do not give the devil a way to defeat you, okay? So, you know, so we're, look, we're talking about doors that we need to shut in our life. In the last few weeks, we've talked about things like habitual sin, okay? We've talked about things like um, curses and generational curses and all those things. And so I want to look at some more this morning. I've got several. We see it. We'll We'll see how far that we can get. Maybe I can really wedge save some of the really yucky ones for Mother's Day. <laughs> Doesn't that make a great Mother's Day sermon? Right. I'll, I'll probably do something else. But, uh, but let's look at some of them. Some things that we often need to deal with and doors that we need to shut. Now, uh, a big one that's, that's even kind of linked into trauma. And uh, uh, how many know that trauma can really open a door to the enemy? Right, because uh, the devil doesn't play fair. Nope. I, I hate that he doesn't play fair, but you know, and, it, and I, I think Dwayne is just so anointed to deal with trauma in people's lives, and so that kind of linked into trauma. It, kind of what comes with that sometimes is involuntary exposure to evil. Right, 
when you've been involuntarily exposed to trauma and evil, it often will, will bring in something from the enemy that you need ministry and healing for. Right. Right? Uh, people, a lot of times people need healing because of things like PTSD. I mean, the church has got to give people answers yes. for getting set free from yes. things like PTSD. Wow. We have answers for that, yep. right? Uh, we have anointing and prayers and, and ways to set people free from some of those things. Because sometimes when the door is, of trauma is open, you may see or experience things that open fear and also can even superimpose things on your mind that bring an open door and an invitation to the enemy, right? And, and, and not only people who, you know, have been exposed to some of these things, but even people like emergency workers and medical workers and some of those things, they can really be exposed involuntarily to evil and trauma. And, uh, you know, I've, I've studied a lot of the things that Rodney Hope teaches, and, and Rodney's a really good teacher and about in these things, and um, one of the area he, he gave a testimony. If you're like, well, get let's get specific about this because sometimes the enemy uh, will expose you to fear, uh, and, and he'll try to use that against you. Now, one example Rodney uses years ago, he was pastoring a church, and uh, there was a, a family in his church, and the guy was um, in the navy, and he was about to be deployed, and so. You know, he's got a four-year-old son. He's wanting to spend some time with his son before he's deployed for several weeks and months. And so he took him to a movie and he took his four-year-old son to see the movie Poltergeist. Oh. Right. Well, <laughs> I don't know how you pick that out for your four-year-old son, right? But sometimes we do stupid things. You ever done a stupid thing, right? You know, I, I mean, I've even watched movies that when I was a kid, I watched, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Yes. I can't believe it. My parents let me watch that, you know? <laughs> and so uh, uh, after, the, so the, the dad goes away for a few weeks, and suddenly the four-year-old is having trouble sleeping at night, oh. right? He's terrified, and uh, um, he, he won't sleep by himself. He's crying all night. One day they're driving and mom's playing some worship music and he says, I need you to turn that off because I don't like it. And she's like, oh, something's wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> so they're home one night and she's playing worship music again and the son gets really agitated and suddenly he loses his vision. And the mama there anointing came on mama and she rebuked that demon that had come in through involuntary exposure to evil. And that thing messed with wrong mama. And they rebuked it, and it left. Oh. Right? Now, you know, again, that's kind of a weird, extreme, scary story. But sometimes we open doors to things because of lack of knowledge, or sometimes just because of stupidity yeah. and ignorance. And that thing came in, and mom, in her authority, took authority over it and said, you got to go. Right? Because the mama bear anointing is pretty strong. Right? So, so that there's, there's even a lesson in that that, you know, if, if your children are struggling with something, um, you can deal with it. However, I think a good rule of thumb is if they're a young child, Deal with them while they're deal with that thing while they're asleep, right? That is like very gentle. You don't have to be like, okay, little Susie, I'm just gonna pray for you. Devil, get out! Right? <laughs> and then your child needs deliverance once again. Yeah, that's the, you've involuntarily exposed them to evil, right? <laughs> I'm not talking to you, but come out, Satan, right? <laughs> so I do think you can pray for children when they're asleep. Now, if they're getting older and, and their will is somehow engaged with that, somehow you've got to get their will also engaged for freedom. Amen.
Because you can't force freedom on someone who doesn't want freedom. Okay? And anybody who's in, he done any deliverance ministry. And let me just say, if you've got family members that you want to get set free and you're trying to get them in for ministry, but they don't want to, stop. It's going to hurt them worse. It has to be their will that's engaged. Okay? And that's a whole other deep topic that we could get into. If you have a family member or loved one that doesn't want ministry in this area, just begin to pray. Uh, pray that it gets worse and they get desperate. It's really true, you know, because sometimes God will take you into a place where you realize how how much you need freedom. That's yeah, not always a bad yeah. thing. So, hallelujah. Amen. Um, another area, that we went over that one pretty quick, but I want to move through some here um, pretty quickly. Here's another fun one that really opens uh, us up to the work of the enemy, and that's rebellion. Hallelujah. And let's turn to Matthew chapter 8, verse, beginning in verse 5 and verse 13. Okay? And this is about the centurion, amen, who understood authority. Okay? So I want to read this passage real fast. Uh, uh, Matthew 8, beginning in verse 5. And when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, entreating him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home suffering great pains. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes, and to another one, come. And he comes, and to my slave, do this. And he does it. Now, when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. It's very interesting because this guy was, was not an Israelite. Amen. He was a Roman. But Jesus is like, I see greater faith in this guy than I do church people. And I, said to, and I say to you that many shall come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom shall be cast out into the outer darkness. In that place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, let it be done to you as you have believed. And the servant was healed that very hour. Now, there's a whole lot in there. But the thing that we're focusing in on is the centurion understood authority. Right? And because he was under authority, the centurion understood that being under authority allows you to exercise greater authority. Okay. You ever seen a police officer who is in, just because he's in a uniform? Now, we're in a little bit of chaos right now. But generally speaking, a police officer can exercise authority because he's under authority. Right. Ian Carroll talks about when he was a 19-year-old kid in Northern Ireland during times of great unrest and strife and, and conflict. And he's like, you know, I could exercise authority because I was under authority. Now, sometimes we don't like this as Americans because we're very individualistic, right? But there is a spiritual principle that when you align with authority, why do you think that it says in Ephesians, is it in Ephesians put the thing here. Yeah, Ephesians 6, 1, 2, 3, that if you honor your mother and your father, that you'll have a long life. Because you're aligning with authority. The, really, the first authority in your life. Right? Um, now, that doesn't mean that you allow authority to abuse you. Right? And if authority isn't aligning with the purposes of God, you need to get into freedom. Right? You need to protect yourself. But whenever it's possible, right, you align with authority that God has put in your life. Amen? And so when we get out from under authority and we begin to walk in rebellion, 
it actually opens us up to attacks from the enemy. Right? This is a very real, because yeah. how many know that, you know, when you, uh, just I, I, aligning with global awakening, there is a flow that comes down from Randy Clark. Yeah. Right? There, there's a, a blessing that comes because we've aligned with authority as well. And Randy himself looks to Bill Johnson as an apostolic voice in his life. So you've got all these people who move in great authority, and yet they're submitting to authority. Right? Remember years ago, Mike and Andrea Brewer were here, and uh, uh, they ran into someone that they knew, and um, someone who was experiencing great attacks in their life. And Mike's comment to me was, she wouldn't be experiencing this attack or, or the difficulty that she is if she simply came under authority. Now, sometimes we don't like that truth. And again, because we have seen abuses of authority, right, sometimes we'll kick back against authority. But the real purpose of authority is to bring blessing, right? And the enemy understands authority. And when we step out from under designated authority in rebellion, right, whether it's our parents, whether sometimes, and this will hurt a little bit, even sometimes the government, right, and, and church, right? And again, I'm not here to tell you guys what to do. Listen, my life, I got enough going on. The last thing I want to do is tell people, really, uh, this is how you need to run your life. I mean, I can give you advice from the Word. I'm not telling you what to do, okay? So, but authority brings blessing. And actually, when we rebel against authority, it opens a door for the enemy to come and bring destruction in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many, many verses of Scripture, and I won't take time to go into all of them right now. And, and how many know that you can walk in submission and honor and even disagree with someone? Yes. You can do that, yeah. right? Even this week, there was one speaker, and I won't name who that person was, and I agreed with a lot of what they said, and I disagreed with a lot of what they said. Right? So, but I still honor that person and everything that they carry in the kingdom. Now, they're not an authority in my life, but Global Awakening brought that person in to be a blessing. And so, I didn't agree with everything, but you know what? I don't think they're a heretic. Right. Right? And I can honor them, right, without completely agreeing with everything that they say or do. So, but the point in all of this is, is when we understand authority, and I know I'm throwing this out very, you're right, uh, in, in a short, and you could probably talk about this a long time, but honoring authority sets you free from many of the things that yeah. the enemy tries to do, because yeah. rebellion is actually a heart issue. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, and so we need to make sure that in our hearts, we're submitted to the Lord, and we're also submitted to the authorities in our lives, right? And even there are even moments when I've been upset with authorities in my life. You ever been upset with an authority in your life? You could all raise your hand, right? Uh, ever been upset with your mom and dad? Ever been upset with your boss? Not today. Not today? <laughs> Ever been upset with a president of the United States? Yeah. Come on. Right? Right? But we still have to, um, and I know this is a touchy subject for many, has been for a long time through multiple presidencies, but there's still an element of honor that we have to participate in, even if we don't totally agree, and pray for God's justice yes, yes. when you don't agree. But honor will open the door for the enemy, right? And uh, so that's that's a really fun one, isn't it? Rebellion. Yeehaw. I'll let you guys meditate on that this week. <laughs> Amen. 
Here's another one, and, and we've talked about this at length, but I think even this morning, God wants us to go a little bit deeper. But unforgiveness is a big one. Yeah. Unforgiveness is huge, huge, huge. And um, a lot of times, unforgiveness is a huge block to actually receiving physical healing. Yes. Right? And it is, if you're trying to minister to someone to get them free in the areas of deliverance and all those things, and someone won't forgive, it, it's it's like dealing with that and dealing with people with, with who've done a lot of new cult. Mm -hmm. Those are two major, major obstacles. And so I want to read, and this is a very familiar passage of Scripture, but I want to, we're already in Matthew, but let's turn to Matthew 18. And it's a long passage, but I want to read it. Because unforgiveness is, is so big, and I, and I want to hit something as well as we go through this, but let me just read this first. And I think we're really going to emphasize verse 35 as well, okay? So we're going to read verses um, 21 through 35 out of Matthew 18. If I'm in the right spot. Yes. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a certain king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he had begun to settle them, there was brought to him one who owed him ten thousand talents. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, along with his wife and children, and all that he had, and repayment to be made. That's a lot harder than bankruptcy court, right? The slave, therefore, falling down, prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him, and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell down and began to entreat him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. He was unwilling, however, but went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what he owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you entreated me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave, even as I had mercy on you? And his Lord, moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. I think that's one of the scariest verses in the Bible. And so shall my heavenly Father also do to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Okay. So there's a lot we could say about that. Uh, you could teach for weeks on for forgiveness and unforgiveness, but we have to forgive, okay? And I'm even going to go a step further, and verse 35 says we have to forgive from the heart. Now, I, first of all, we don't understand everything about what unforgiveness is and is not, and Okay. So for, forgiveness is not, some people say, well, if I forgive, that means I'm saying that what that person did was okay. No, that's not forgiveness, okay? It's also not saying that you've come to terms with it, okay? It's also not excusing it or forgetting it, okay? Uh, it's also not, in some situations, it doesn't mean that you have to be reconciled to that person. Because sometimes for your own heart and mind and soul, you, you, you don't have to be reconciled to someone that's dangerous to you. Okay? If, if, for example, if you've been molested by someone, it's probably wise not to reconcile to them. Right? 
However, there is another side to this that I feel like sometimes we've gone so far in understanding those things that we're like, well, they've done me wrong, and I'm going to forgive them, but I'm cutting them off. Well, the Bible says that if it's anywhere in your power, that you're supposed to forgive from the heart and be reconciled to that person. Wow. Mm -hmm. right. it's, you want to read that? Let, let's read it, because I think sometimes, sometimes we've treated relationships as so disposable, and that's not kingdom. Right. Right. Let's read that. This is also in Matthew 8, but I want us to look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 26. If therefore you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your, off your offering there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent in law while you're with him on the way, in order that your opponent may not deliver you to the judge. And the judge to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Again, there's that same concept of being in prison. So Jesus is saying reconciliation as a person in the kingdom is of highest value. And he says, before you go to worship, like this morning, if we're gathering together and everybody's like, ooh, I'm ready to worship God. Ooh, I like that song. Uh, you know, don't you be shy, you know, whatever it is. Uh, or don't give up on me. I know, I'm just teasing, boy. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you know what this scripture actually says? That if, if you have an issue, and ultimately it's a heart issue, and you've not been reconciled to someone, that you need to reconcile with, leave worship and go do that. Right? Because, well, but do it without damaging somebody. Right? Sometimes you go tell somebody, you know, I've had this issue with you, and they didn't even know, and they're like, what the heck? Sometimes that creates more drama. That's not how you do that, right? But the reality is, in our unfor in our forgiveness, now sometimes you just have to start where you are, right? You're like, Lord, this morning I'm just starting as an act of my will to forgive Sister Susan. Right? I'm not really, there's no Susan here, is there? Okay. Or even a Susan that's left. I'm not talking about that Susan. Right? That was just an example, right? <laughs> but sometimes that's where we start. Right? And, and we have to forgive from the heart. There have been so many relationships in and outside of the church, in and outside of families, because we won't let God reconcile our heart. It's so, you know, it's so popular on social media. Go where you're celebrated and not just tolerated. And I believe that, but ultimately, relationships aren't disposable. And, and sometimes that actually becomes an excuse because we're not willing to let God deal with the damage that's in our hearts. Right? And sometimes it does start just in, in faith. God, I need grace to forgive that person because they've hurt me. Right? And here's the ultimate reality. And, and, and you know what we read just here right now about leaving worship and going and being reconciled? The whole context of that passage is actually about murder. Because when you stay in unforgiveness, 
you start moving into things like vengeance and murder, and you may not literally kill them, but in your heart, you wish them dead. You ever been there? Right? That that old country song, I pray for you, I pray that your brakes go out. And you know, it's a love song. <laughs> I don't remember what all that <laughs> that song says, but you, you know, um, we we have to let the Lord deal with some of the deep issues of our heart because, you know, Jesus, Jesus was rough. And Jesus said stuff like, you know, the law said don't, uh, you know, commit adultery, but I say to you that if you've even looked on a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. And Jesus went beyond the surface and he went to the deep issues of the heart. Right? Everybody's like, no, we live under grace, grace, grace. No, grace sometimes is a lot tougher. Because God wants to get to the root of some of those hard issues. And, and you know what? It's really, it's because it's for your benefit more than the person that you're forgiving. Because ultimately, they really don't care. You're like, I'm going to make them. I'm not forgiving it. Well, you're you're the one who's been damaged in that. You're the one who's just said, I, I'm keeping the old man of bitterness, and I'm wrapping myself up in this nasty jacket of bitterness and hate. That that's who ultimately gets hurt, not the person that you're refusing to forgive from the heart. And you're, you're letting go, you're releasing them from a debt that you could never pay and they could never pay. And that, that's just one of the biggest doors that the enemy really tries to come in and mess with us. And man, just shut that door. Just, just shut it because God wants you to be free. And again, if it's something that's going to hurt you, you know, um, to do that mentally, physically, emotionally, then there's a boundary that you still need to maintain. But if it's a family member that you can forgive, right? and again, some family members, it may be toxic for you. But as much as it's in your power, you have to release that because... It, it is an invitation for, for such toxicity to come into your life. And the enemy loves that open door. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. years ago, when you guys have heard, I think if you've been in supernatural school, you've heard me talk about that Jamie and I were ministering in Japan to this American lady. We're, we're praying for her. And she suddenly fell on the ground, slithered across the floor like a snake. That'll get your attention. It was one of our first deliverance sessions on our own, and we're just like, holy expletive. You know? And I'm just being honest, right? From that moment on, we begin to bring a change of clothing for a deliverance session. And um, But that lady, um, when she had, with her first marriage, her husband had killed their child. And we're like, listen, we know, and we don't know. We don't know how, how painful that is. But this is for your good, and you have to release them. Does that mean that y'all going to get remarried or be Facebook friends? Right. <laughs> so the, the, you have to forgive. And she said, I can't do it. I won't do it. So we said, God bless you. The session's over. Because 
there's nothing we could do at that moment, you know, because she given permission to tormentors to come into her life and keep her in bondage. Right? And, um, and that woman, I watched her completely crash. I watched her, watched her um, try to split the church. I watched her eventually divorce her husband, the new husband, go back to America. I, I actually was her Facebook friend and actually had to hide her because of the bitterness that she continually spewed just on Facebook. You know you can't hide people on social media for your own mental health. I've hidden some of y'all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, we forgive you. Yeah, you forgive me. Uh, but but God, God wants us free. And, and he, he loves us so much that he'll, he'll go for the deep issues of the heart. Right? And, and that's a huge door that we have to shut. Amen. And we've all got those areas. I would venture to say that every one of us have at least one person that that we still have to, um, and you know, sometimes it's like a, it, it's a layer. Yeah. Sometimes you're like, I've forgiven that person, and then you're sitting in a sermon, and they start just keep coming back to your mind as I'm preaching. And, and sometimes I just do the, the prayer again, even if I've forgiven them. I, I just do it again. And we joke about the Walmart test. One of the best ways you know if you've forgiven somebody is if you see them at Walmart and you can actually talk to them or not hit them with your cart. We just don't go to Walmart, so it's not a problem, right? We cannot be tested. You, know, you see them and you're hiding behind the fruit. Or there are those moments when you see them and you're like, oh my gosh, I actually... Was able to talk to them and I didn't vomit. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so I want you right now. Ask, ask the Holy Spirit. We're just gonna take a moment and um, just just ask Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, show me who I need to forgive. It may be an obvious choice or it may be surprising. So we're going to pray this prayer, okay? Now, there's a point where you're going to say, I now choose to forgive. Don't blurt it out. <laughs> I choose to forgive Pastor Andy. <laughs> uh, that's going to be really hard for me. <laughs> If you need to do it, then do it. But um, just say that quietly. Or if it's your spouse. Right? I choose to forgive Jamie. Right? It's going to be hard the next few hours, right? Just say it quietly in your heart. Okay? So let's, let's just say this. I want you to repeat this after me. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I choose to forgive. As I have been forgiven. I now choose to forgive. This is where you just say it in your heart. Okay. I release any right I have retained to bring revenge against them. I release them from my hands. And place them into your hands. Jesus, my just judge. I break every curse I have spoken against them. And I call forth a blessing toward them in return. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me the grace to forgive. Just receive that right now. Just receive that grace. Just receive.
receive that forgiveness. And so, Lord, anything that's tried to come in through unforgiveness, any tormenting spirit, we just tell it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Father, any assignment of the enemy, Father, we speak to those things to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Every tormenting spirit, we tell you to go. Holy Spirit, I even ask that right now, you just come in and you fill the void. Father, where there's been torment, where there's been unforgiveness, Lord, I ask that you just instead fill up that broken area and you repair it with your mercy and your grace. Lord, just rain on each person right now. Father, even those, some of us have places that we actually don't really want to go because we've held on to them so long. Lord, I just ask, even as we begin to just by faith do this, I ask that you begin to rain on that those dry places, on those hard places, by the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Father, some of us just did this even in faith, even though it was still very painful. And so I ask for grace to touch all of them, to touch these areas that are still very difficult to let go of. Or that you give us grace to forgive, and you give us grace to be healed, and that you give us grace to forgive from the heart. And Lord, where it's appropriate that we can be reconciled. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you for freedom that's coming on people right now. More freedom, Lord. More of your freedom. More joy. More peace. More shalom. Lord, more, more unity, more forgiveness, more love, more power. I thank you that you're just watering everyone, Father, with your mercy and your grace. And Father, we just shut that door of unforgiveness. Lord, we shut doors of rebellion. We shut every door of sin. Father, thank you even over that you're even setting people free as we even prayed last week and the week before. Just even some uh, some generational curses that you're just continuing to break off people. And Lord, that we we won't stay in unforgiveness, that we won't hold on to that, that generational thing of unforgiveness. But Lord, we're going to walk in forgiveness and our, our children are going to walk in forgiveness and our grandchildren are going to walk in forgiveness. And Lord, it's just even, it, it, it's as we forgive, it's even just chasing off some of those those generational things that have tried to hang on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we break every chain right now. Just as we sang at the end of worship, I just break every chain and every assignment of the enemy that tries to keep us in old hurt. Lord, I even break off chains in this city that try to keep even churches bound, movements bound, denominations bound. Father, decades of unforgiveness that have tried to cause the body of Christ to be divided in Ardmore, Oklahoma, in Carter County, in Southern Oklahoma. Father, I just thank you that there's forgiveness that you're pouring out right now on the body of Christ in South Central Oklahoma, even into Northern Texas. I thank you that you're mending churches. Father, that you're not just doing something in this place, but that, Lord, you're even doing something in this city in this region. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, I don't know if this is a word of knowledge. I'm not really feeling it as much as I'm kind of sensing it. Is anybody having lots of headaches in the back part of their head? Specifically in the back part of your head, right in this area. Anybody feeling that? Or you felt it? Right here? Okay, stand up. So are you having it now or have you been having it? Okay. Okay. Do you know what causes that? Old age? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I just 
felt that for, I, 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 I just, I didn't feel it, right? Because sometimes when I get words of knowledge, it's just, it's really fast and it's almost like I hear it in my, yeah. So anyway, so whatever that is, let's just all extend our hand. Those of you that are close to Jim, just lay hands on him. And so, Father, whatever's causing this headache, whether it's allergies or something else, Father, we just speak to it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we break every assignment. Holy Spirit, come. Break this assignment right now. We tell these headaches to go. Whatever the source is, whatever the cause is, we command it to go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Are there any generational thing as well? We just speak to it to go in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Okay. So, I don't know if you were, were you having any pain? You're stiff? Okay. Anything changing in the stiffness? It's cracking? Okay. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. Father, we command the stiffness to go. Pain go, stiffness go. Father, let your spirit flow and move. Extend your hand to heal God in Jesus' name. Okay? Any, any change? <laughs> any change? <laughs> any change? Anything happening? Okay. All right. Yeah. So, Lord, we just thank you. Martha's been praying that you deliver him from a stiff neck for a long time. So, Lord, thank you. <laughs> we speak to all that to go in Jesus' name. More, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen? Now, sometimes when you forgive, you'll find that maybe... Some of those long-term things that you struggled with will start going. What's that? A right kidney. Okay. Okay. Stand up and show everybody where. Okay. So anybody having an issue right there? Kidney, back, anything along those lines? Right here. Okay. Paul, what's going on? Stand up. All right, put your hand on right there where it hurts. Okay, is it hurting right now? No. Okay, let's just pray. So, Father, thank you. Lord, we speak to any pain to go in Jesus' name, affliction, infirmity. Go in Jesus' name. And Lord, let healing flow, God, in the name of Jesus. More Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We bless what you're doing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So it wasn't hurting. Okay? Yeah. Just sometimes it comes and goes. Right. 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 I get you. Amen. All right. So we just bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God's good. So if there's something that you've been struggling with, just ask the Lord to touch that now that you've released unforgiveness. Amen. And there's, a, I believe it allows a greater, I, I think inner healing and deliverance is one of, it's what, one of the things that the church is missing is why many people don't get healed, right? And unforgiveness is a big, big, big part of that. So, hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you do need more prayer for physical healing, I want to ask my interns to come up and we'll pray for you if you need further prayer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Bless you guys. Let Holy Spirit work forgiveness in you this week. He'll probably show you. You'll be driving down the street and that song will come on, you know. I pray that her brakes go out. You know. <laughs> and first of all, you need to get delivered from that song. No. But if Holy Spirit highlights something like that, just be quick to forgive. Amen. 
They have to Google it. I don't know the title or who sings it or anything like that, but you might ask Alan. He may know. But, <laughs> what is it? I pray. Google I pray. Amen. Bless you guys. We are dismissed. Come if you need more prayer. Have a great week in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much for your love. We're so appreciative of you. Amen? God bless.